We're going to give you a, a quick uh, tour of the locator before we get to the meat and the potatoes. We're inside actually because it's raining outside, but that's not going to bother us in here. This is the Pro 900, and again, I'll just give you a quick overview of some of the features it has on it. An inventory, shall we say. Okay, first of all, this is the inductive clamp here. We'll get to that in detail in a minute. Ground stake for a traditional locate. The D batteries are located here, like you're used to. But we also have an AC adapter, not a charger, it's an adapter. And it's gonna plug into this port here and allow you to use the locator, the transmitter, on an AC power outlet. Yeah, there'll be some times when you find your battery, D batteries are dead or they're missing or something. Um, if you can get anywhere near an AC outlet, this will allow you to continue working. Here we have the headset. You guys are all familiar with headsets. This one's a little bit different though because what we found was cost of ownership uh, using stereo headsets, which is what this is, stereo, is a lot less expensive than having to find those unique mono headsets that we've had in the past. Stereo you can get anywhere. Yeah, and, and if you don't like having this weight or, the, or, or if it's a hot day, you don't like having this on your head, you can go to earbuds. Anything you, anywhere you buy a stereo headset, you can be using with this. And headsets, of course, are optional. We also have speaker in the wand. But this is basically how we turn it on and where you're going to do all your uh, setup function. When you first turn the unit on, you get a splash screen that has the company name on it, but it goes immediately to a control, very simple digital control panel. I can select either the broadcast or clamp mode or the more conventional clip-on. The unit comes with cords, of course, that go with the ground stake for the conventional type locating that, that you're more familiar with than we have covered in earlier videos. Um, one of the important things about this unit is the broadcast function, and I can select it here by just pushing the button. I'm getting a little antenna indicator, and right now what's happening is this broadcast antenna in here is putting out our big non-contact tracing signal. Um, if, we, if we chose to use the clamp instead of the broadcast antenna, we simply plug the clamp in and it bypasses this antenna mm -hmm. so you can switch modes back and forth very easily. You don't have to touch the control panel and the power is automatic. Mm -hmm. You also notice we've taken a lot of the analog uh, controls and indicators off and replaced them with digital. So here on the screen you see what we call a gas gauge, which is basically a battery indicator uh, gauge, I guess you'd call yeah, it. Yeah. So it's going to tell you where your batteries are if you're using battery. But again, I'd use the AC first and foremost. If you don't want to use this broadcast mode, you hit done, it's going to take you out. And then Jim's going to show you the setup menu for the first time. When you first get it, there's a setup menu you're going to go through to set it up the way you want to. Yeah, you don't have to touch setup usually after you get the unit and get it, get it configured the way you want. But when you go to setup, when you get here, it gives you ability to cause the unit to power itself down automatically after a per certain period of time or to never shut itself off. That's one of the things that um, you can select. You, when you're in this menu, you use the arrow keys on the one side to go through the choices that you have. Right now, we're configured to use ordinary alkaline D-cell batteries. You can configure it so you can use rechargeable batteries, which are a little bit different voltage. Mm. That's one of the functions. But, but this is not a recharger. This is a, an AC adapter. Right. So. If you use D-cells, for instance, uh, um, lithium ion or some other technique, when you put those batteries in here, you charge them elsewhere, put the batteries in here, you need to change this. That's not a very common thing that people do. Um, you can change the contrast on the screen if you're working a lot outside. If it's a gray day, if it's a very bright day. Um, I'm from Arizona, we have a lot of issues with bright sunlight and LCD displays. You can change the contrast to suit yourself. Um, the not backlight. So, not so much today, apparently. Yeah, and, and there's a backlight, depending on how, how often you work in low light, you can control that. For that matter, uh, you can reduce the backlight and, reduce, and increase the battery life. But um, pattern is an interesting function. One of the things that we did with this locator is we made it so you can either have a tracing signal that's going beep, 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 or have a steady tone, a beep, and it's more like a little metal detector sort of when you're doing that. As you sweep over the wire, you just get stronger signals instead of stronger beep beeping. So there are just a few things that you can set in here, but some of those are, are interesting and important, like the pattern. So when you're done doing these things, um, you can just say back, and I'm back at the main menu. And in this case, we just ran to the broadcast, but we're gonna, if I want to go to the more conventional direct clip-on mode, um, I'm at a screen that allows me to use these clips and, and the ground stake to do kind of conventional clip-on locating. One of the differences with this model is we have two frequencies on the transmitter. And the significance of that is that um, the low and high frequencies are used in slightly different applications. The, the most common conventional irrigation locators use a low frequency. They go for long distances and they can be heard very deep in the ground. 
Sometimes you're working with things like landscape lighting or even short or cut irrigation wires. You need to switch to the higher frequency. It's easier to detect that. Uh, if it's just laying in the mulch, it's not getting a good ground con conducting signal. You can go to the high frequency and it's easier to find. So it, it has up uh, eight power signal levels. But as I say, um, if you go um, start with a low, low power level to begin with, you'll probably be happier. One of the things that happens, this ha also has a little battery meter in here, or, or gas gauge if you want, like the battery. Um, when you have a good signal going out, you start to see the meter uh, increase. In fact, if you've got uh, a good quality indicator when you're doing a clip-on location, in our older style, we, if you've got a good signal in the meter, that was showing you had a good quality locate going on. With this one, the bar starts to kick up and um, you get a little indicator there to show you you've got a good locate happening. So It says OK, right? It says OK. Yep. And that means you've probably got enough signal going into the wire mm -hmm. to get a good locate. On the old locators, you had that five or six position switch. This is replacing that. Right, and this indicator on the screen is replacing the meter, mm -hmm. basically. Okay, so that's the screen and how we set it up. Yeah, when, when you're done with this mode, if you're not using direct clip-on, you can go back to, uh, to idle by hit selecting done. And when you're, you're through with the unit generally, um, you can just turn it off with the okay. power key. On the wand, this is the wand for the, the uh, unit. Same thing, it's digital. Turn it on. Oops, didn't hold it down long enough. Got the same kind of digital screen. You're gonna have the same menu setup that we had here before, but it's gonna be directed towards the wand. Uh, you can set it up as null or peak. Over here is gonna be my volume control. One thing to note is when you set up the locator on a certain frequency like low, the wand also has to be on low. They have to match to work together.